you can see the photograph of a woman taking a photograph, and it's a very white photo. She's obviously out in a snowstorm. So what I'd like to address with this one is the difference between brightness and contrast. It's one of the most important things to consider if you're adjusting a photograph because it will make the difference between a photograph that, that's light and pops or has some kind of uh, darker tone to it. It depends on, and, and neither is right or wrong, of course. It's just whatever message that you want to relay to your, to your audience. You, you always have the option of, of adjusting your photograph brightness and, co and contrast uh, as needed, and both options are, again, available under the image uh, menu. And this time, instead of mode, we're going to go down to adjustments. And brightness and contrast is the first option. So if I click that, we get a little window on the right. So if we bring down the, the brightness, let's say we enter minus 25, what you might see, you begin to see a little more detail come up from behind it. We're, we're telling Photoshop to bring forward some of the detail, the darker components of the image. In its brilliance, Photoshop can do all the math on what it should bring forward and what it shouldn't. I've, I brought it down 25. If we do uh, a negative 50, we do even more, then even more of the background comes out. If I go all the way, we can see there's actually quite a, a, quite a lot going on behind her. There's the trees, there's the houses. But if you can look closely, I'm not sure. Oh, it's also pretty pixelated. It's not, there's a lot of detail there that it's bringing forward, but it's not perfect. The photo was probably taken where it was, it was very snowy and it was very hard to get a lot of detail. It wasn't meant to be shown with, with the camera that was taken. So you want to be careful not to go too much in any one direction because it will it'll start to look a little funny after a while. Now if we go the other direction, if we bring it, if we go back to zero, we bring it back to what we started with. That's the stock photo there. Now we'll bring it up, uh, the brightness up 50. We've lost a lot more detail in the back, and even she, the, the subject has begun to be washed out around the edges because of the whiteness of the photograph. And again, you can go too much with this too. If we bring it up to 100, we can barely see her. It, it's hard to tell she's even in a snowstorm taking a photograph. She's just a poorly photographed subject. So just consider that with brightness, it is the overall lightness or darkness of the image. It, it doesn't affect much of the, of, it doesn't affect the contrast, which is what I'll get to next. So let me bring that back down to zero. And then we'll switch over to contrast, which is of course the, the tab right below it. Uh, contrast will adjust the brightness It'll adjust the difference in brightness between parts of an image. So if I bring this down, the contrast down, 25 doesn't do a whole lot. You might not see a difference there, but if I bring it, I want that to go down. If I bring it down 50, and I'm going to switch back and forth on the previews, it's subtle. If you look at her, the darkness of her jacket versus the whiteness of the background, this is without any change to the contrast, and if I choose Preview back on, her, uh, her, the, the darkness of her coat becomes lighter, and the whiteness of the background becomes a little darker. It's changing the balance between the darkness and the lightness rather than applying a brightness or darkness uh, overall. So these are, if you don't have a good handle on uh, the difference between brightness and contrast or when to use which, that's totally fine. It's, that's why uh, Photoshop gives you sliders. You can adjust it uh, until it looks right. And just one other thing I wanted to talk about is the difference between tint, tone, and shade. So of course a lot of these terms we use pretty regularly, the, the tone of something or um, you know, catching shade, things like that. But when it comes to, to photographs, it's very specific. These are very, very, these are very specific terms. The color wheel. So uh, if you'll allow me to indulge in a little bit of color theory. The center of the color wheel that I'm pointing out here is the hue. And if you consider hue to be just the, the, the most basic form of that color, it's, it's, per, it's, it's red, it's blue, it's yellow, that's, that's your hue. The tint of, will add white to whatever image, uh, whatever color you're adjusting. Uh, it'll become lighter and it'll become desaturated. And a little bit of what we were talking about a moment ago with, uh, with brightness and contrast is that difference. So uh, saturation being that balance between a more vivid, more, more highly contrasted colors versus 
just lightening them in general. So adding white will lighten and desaturate a color. And if we follow out on this wheel, tone will add both white and black or gray, if you think about it, and to a certain degree, to however much you, you ask for, can both lighten and darken and saturate and desaturate a color. And then shade on the outside is just adding black. Obviously, it'll just darken it and it will saturate that color. For purposes today, we're just talking about these three, about the tone, the contrast, and the color. The subject looks great, it's very crisp and very clear, but the colors are off. Photoshop has options under the image menu again. Right near the top, we have auto tone, auto contrast, and auto color. These are usually my, my first steps to making an image look good that, that may have some tone problems. This is a quick and dirty way of changing it, so that's of course the first place I go to because it's simple. If this doesn't look right, of course there are a lot of options to get it just how you want it with the brightness, the contrast, the color balance, any of those things. Those are all located, the place that I mentioned earlier under the adjustments menu for today. If I just go back down to auto color and click that, it looks great. The, the blues are back, the, uh, the yellow of the, of, the, of the wasp is there, the, the wood looks like actual wood color. Photoshop is able to determine based on the, the colors that are present in the image if there's way too much of something. I mean, no, no photo necessarily needs so much orange, but it also balances out uh, what's in it versus what it should be. These are really handy features. And I'm going to undo that so we can go back to our, our orangey version. And if I choose Auto Tone, so for Auto Tone, it'll make your light colors, the, the lightest color anywhere in your, in your uh, image will make it white. It'll make the darkest color black. It'll cut out on the spectrum anything that's outside of that and assume that what you want that's light should be lighter and that what you want that's dark should be darker. It's the time to use that is when you're, that the contrast looks flat. It'll bring the darker parts darker and the, and the lighter parts lighter. Auto Contrast. This does something similar to the auto tone, but the difference here is, is, is highlights versus shadows. Highlights and shadows are just the upper range of your image, not the mid-tones is what they're called. So the highlights are only the highest, brightest colors, and the, the shadows are the darkest. It doesn't touch the mid-tones, whereas auto tone, if everything is skewed too bright or too dark, will adjust the mid-tones accordingly too. Uh, and lastly, uh, the one I, I showed the example of first, which was auto color. This will balance the color based on the images, shadows, midtones, and highlights.